walking through the forests always made me feel calm. The tall trees, the rustling leaves, and the occasional bird chirping made it my favorite place to get away. But this time, something felt different. I decided to take a new path, one I hadn't tried before. The air was cooler, and the shadows seemed darker. As I walked, I noticed the trail getting narrower. The thick trees above blocked out most of the sunlight, making it hard to see far ahead. I told myself to keep going, curious about where this path might go. But the deeper I went, the more uneasy I felt. There were no animals, no birds, no squirrels. Just an eerie silence. My heart started to beat faster as I realized I might be lost. I turned to head back but couldn't find the trail I had come from. Everything looked the same, endless trees and thick bushes. Panic started to creep in. I walked faster, hoping to find something familiar. My mind raced with thoughts of how long it would take for someone to notice I was missing. After what felt like hours, I saw something through the trees, a flicker of light. Hope surged through me as I hurried toward it. As I got closer, I saw it was a small cabin, old and rundown but a sign of life nonetheless. Relief washed over me. I approached the cabin carefully, unsure if anyone was inside. The door was slightly open, and I pushed it open slowly. Inside, it was dark and dusty. I found a lantern and lit it, brightening the small space. It looked like no one had been there in years. Dust covered everything, and cobwebs hung from the corners. Despite the cabin state, it was a place to rest and think. I found an old map on a table, covered in dust. It showed the forest trails, and after looking at it, I figured out where I was. I marked my spot and traced a path back to a main trail that would lead me home. Feeling more sure of myself, I decided to stay in the cabin overnight. I blocked the door with a heavy piece of furniture, making sure no wild animals could get in. I managed to get a few hours of restless sleep, waking up at the slightest noise. At dawn, I packed the map and a few supplies I found in the cabin and set off. The early morning light made it easier to find my way and I felt a new sense of determination. Following the map, I found the main trail after a couple of hours. The familiar path brought a rush of relief. By midday, I was back at the edge of the forest, tired but safe. The experience had been scary, but I had made it out. The forest, once a place of peace, now held a different kind of respect in my mind. I learned to trust my gut and the importance of being prepared. From that day on, I always let someone know where I was going and carried a proper map and supplies. The forest remained my escape, but I never ventured too far off the known paths again. Just as I was about to leave, I took one last look at the forest. That's when I noticed something strange. In the shadow of the trees, where the path disappeared, I saw a figure. It was too far to see clearly, but it was there, standing still, watching me. A chill ran down my spine. I blinked, and it was gone. I hurried to my car, glancing back over my shoulder the whole way. As I drove away, I couldn't shake the feeling that something, or someone, was still out there, waiting. It was a cool autumn afternoon when I decided to take a walk in the forest behind my house. I'd been on this path many times, enjoying the quiet and calm it offered. The leaves crunched under my boots, and the cool air filled my lungs as I went deeper into the woods. After about an hour of walking, I realized I had taken a different turn than usual. The path was unfamiliar, but I wasn't worried. I had always been good with directions, and the sun was still high in the sky. I kept walking, confident that I would soon find my way back. As the sun began to set, a thick fog started to roll in, making it harder to see the path ahead. The trees looked different, their branches twisted and creepy, casting strange shadows on the ground. I pulled my jacket tighter around me and walked faster, hoping to find a familiar landmark. The light was fading fast, and with it, my confidence. I reached for my phone to use the flashlight but I had no signal. I cursed under my breath and kept moving, the fog now so thick I could barely see a few feet in front of me. 
I stumbled upon an open area and decided to rest for a moment. The silence was creepy, broken only by the occasional rustle of leaves. I tried to stay calm, but the reality of my situation was sinking in. I was lost. Determined not to panic, I thought back to my hiking knowledge. I knew I had to stay put and wait for morning when the fog would likely lift. I found a large rock to sit on and wrapped myself in my jacket, trying to keep warm. Hours passed, and the forest seemed to come alive with nighttime sounds. Every crack of a branch or rustle of leaves sent shivers down my spine. I reminded myself it was just the local animals, nothing more. Eventually, exhaustion took over, and I dozed off. I awoke to the first light of dawn, the fog slowly lifting. I stood up, stretching my stiff limbs, and took a deep breath. With the improved visibility, I could make out a faint path leading away from the clearing. I followed it, my heart lifting as the trees began to look more familiar. After what felt like forever, I finally recognized a large oak tree I had passed many times before. Relief washed over me as I quickened my pace, soon finding the main path back to my house. As I emerged from the forest, the morning sun bathed everything in a warm glow. I looked back at the woods, feeling a mix of relief and unease. The experience had shaken me deeply. From that day on, I made sure to stick to the familiar paths and always told someone where I was going. But something about that night stayed with me. Sometimes, when the fog rolls in thick, I swear I hear whispers coming from the forest, calling my name. The trees seem to watch me, their branches moving even when there's no wind. I can't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone that night and that something, or someone, was watching me waiting for the fog to return. I had always loved hiking alone. The forest was my getaway, a place where I could clear my head and forget about the everyday grind. That Saturday, I decided to check out a new trail I found online. It was a bit off the beaten path, promising untouched nature and a peaceful vibe. I parked my car at the edge of the forest and started my hike around noon. The trail was narrow and winding, with thick trees on either side. The sun peeked through the leaves, casting little patches of light on the ground. The air was fresh, and I could hear birds singing and leaves rustling. About an hour into my hike, I realized I hadn't seen any trail markers for a while. I pulled out my map, but it didn't match what I was seeing. I must have taken a wrong turn somewhere. I decided to backtrack, but after twenty minutes of walking, nothing looked familiar. I started to panic. I knew the sun would set in a few hours, and I didn't have much time to find my way back. I tried to stay calm and think logically. I had my phone, but there was no signal. I marked my spot with a small pile of stones and set off in what I thought was the right direction. As I walked, the forest seemed to close in around me. The trees grew thicker, and the path more overgrown. I tripped over roots and pushed aside branches. The sun was starting to go down, and the light was fading. My heart was pounding, but I kept moving, hoping to find a landmark or a clearing. Suddenly, I heard a rustling noise behind me. I froze and listened, but it was gone. Just an animal, I told myself probably more scared of me than I was of it. But the noise came again, closer this time. I started walking faster, trying to put some distance between myself and whatever was out there. I came across a small stream and decided to follow it. Water usually led to people, or so I hoped. The ground was slippery, and I had to watch my step. I slipped once, catching myself on a rock, but scraped my hand in the process. The forest was getting darker, and I could barely see. I dug out my flashlight and turned it on, the beam cutting through the darkness. I kept moving, my footsteps echoing in the quiet. The stream led me to a wider path, and I almost cried with relief. I followed the path, and after what felt like forever, I saw lights ahead. A cabin, hidden among the trees. I approached cautiously, not wanting to scare whoever was inside. I knocked on the door, and an elderly couple answered. They were surprised to see me but welcomed me in without a second thought. 
I explained my situation, and they offered me food and a place to rest. They had a landline phone, and I called for help. The next morning, a park ranger arrived to take me back to my car. I was tired but grateful. As I drove home, I couldn't shake the feeling of how close I had come to spending the night lost in the forest. It was a reminder to always be prepared and to respect the power of nature. But just when I thought the nightmare was over, something caught my eye in the rearview mirror. A dark figure, standing at the edge of the forest, watching my car drive away. I blinked, and it was gone. I laughed it off, chalking it up to my tired mind playing tricks on me. But the unease lingered, and as I pulled into my driveway, I couldn't help but glance over my shoulder one last time, half expecting to see that figure standing there, watching, waiting. It was meant to be a usual hike through the thick forest trails, a chance to relax and get away from city life. The morning sun shone through the trees as I set off on the clear path. The air was cool, birds sang nearby, and a gentle breeze moved the leaves above me. As I walked deeper into the woods, the calm started to fade. The trail, once easy to follow, began to narrow and twist unexpectedly. My map, usually reliable, didn't match the terrain around me. Every turn led to more unfamiliar woods, each path looking the same as the last. Hours passed, and my confidence dwindled. The forest felt alive, like it was watching me struggle to find my way. Panic set in when I saw my phone had no signal. A sinking feeling gripped my stomach as I wondered what to do next, each step becoming more uncertain. The sun sank low, casting eerie shadows through the trees. Tired and confused, I stumbled upon an old, worn sign half hidden by vines. It pointed to a narrow trail barely visible through the bushes. With fading daylight and little hope left, I hesitated before moving forward. The path twisted and turned, every step echoing in the quiet. Shadows flickered at the corner of my eye, and strange noises made me jump at every sound. Fear ate away at my determination as the forest closed in around me suffocatingly silent. Just as I felt I couldn't go on, a gap in the trees revealed a clearing. Relief flooded through me as I found myself back on the main trail. The setting sun bathed the path in golden light, and I hurried towards safety, heart pounding with each step. Finally emerging from the woods, I collapsed onto a bench at the trailhead. The world outside the forest seemed brighter and friendlier than ever before. But the memory of those dark woods lingered, a reminder that nature can be unpredictable, testing us in ways we never expect. As I sat catching my breath, a chill ran down my spine. Something in those woods felt wrong, like I wasn't alone out there. It was a feeling I couldn't shake off, haunting me long after I left the forest behind. I love hiking, especially on remote trails where few people go. Last weekend, I decided to try a new path with amazing views of the valley below. The trail started well, winding through dense woods with leaves rustling and birds calling. As I climbed higher, the forest got thicker and the sunlight dimmed through the trees. Trail markers became scarce, and I had to trust my instincts more than the science. The air grew colder, and a creepy silence settled in broken only by my footsteps on fallen leaves. After what felt like hours, I reached a clearing with a stunning view of the valley. The sight was breathtaking, but it didn't last. The sun was setting fast, casting long shadows that seemed to stretch from the trees like dark fingers. I decided to head back, retracing my steps. Somehow, the path didn't look right anymore. Panic set in as I hurried, trying to find a familiar landmark. The forest, once welcoming, now felt suffocating, with shapes moving just beyond my sight. My heart pounded harder with each step. I checked my phone, but there was no signal. Sweat trickled down my back despite the chill. I stumbled upon an old signpost, barely visible in the fading light. It pointed in two directions, both equally unfamiliar. 
Fear gripped me as I realized I was lost. How long until someone would notice I was missing? Would they find me before nightfall? I pushed forward, hoping for a clearing or anything to guide me. But the forest closed in, shadows growing deeper by the minute. Just when despair was about to take over, I saw a faint glow through the trees. With hope, I pushed through the underbrush and found a small cabin in a clearing, warmly lit. Relief washed over me as I approached cautiously. An elderly man opened the door, his face weathered but friendly. I must have looked wild, disheveled and out of breath. He listened patiently, offering me a seat by the fire and a warm drink. He was a retired park ranger who lived alone in the woods. He assured me I wasn't the first lost hiker he'd helped and promised to guide me back to the main trail in the morning. Sitting there, wrapped in a blanket, I realized how close I had come to spending the night lost in the wilderness. The ranger's calm and the crackling fire were a stark contrast to the fear I had felt moments ago. The next morning, true to his word, the ranger led me back to the trailhead. As I walked away, grateful for the experience but still shaken, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. I glanced back at the cabin, but the ranger was nowhere in sight. It was as if he had vanished into thin air. I hurried down the trail, the hairs on my neck prickling as if someone, or something, was following me. The forest seemed to whisper secrets, and I quickened my pace, eager to leave its grasp behind. Even now, safe at home, I sometimes hear the creak of branches outside my window and wonder if it's just the wind, or something else, lingering from that eerie night in the woods. As I trekked deep into the thick forest, a mix of excitement and unease filled me. The trail, which was supposed to be clear, started fading into a tangle of bushes and fallen trees. Sweat dripped down my back despite the cool morning air. The trees above blocked most of the sunlight, casting eerie moving shadows with every rustle of leaves. After hours of hiking, I realized I had wandered off the trail. Panic started creeping in, but I fought to stay calm. Looking at my map, I tried to figure out where I was, but everything around me seemed unfamiliar. The forest played tricks on my sense of direction, making every path appear equally daunting and uncertain. As dusk settled, the temperature dropped sharply. I could hear nocturnal animals stirring, intensifying my feeling of isolation. I pressed forward, hoping to find a clearing or any sign of human presence. The rustling of leaves behind me made my heart race. Yet each time I looked back, there was nothing there. Exhausted and shaking from the cold, I stumbled upon a decrepit cabin. Relief washed over me, but as I approached, a sense of dread crept back. The cabin's windows were broken, and the door hung crooked on its hinges. Reluctantly, I entered, desperate for shelter. Inside, the air was stale, filled with the smell of decay and neglect. Remnants of someone's life were scattered around, a rusty kettle on the stove, torn curtains fluttering in the draft. I tried to reassure myself that this place was safer than the ominous forest outside. Night deepened, and the wind howled through gaps in the cabin's walls. Fear clawed at me as I heard footsteps pacing outside. I held my breath, hoping it was just my imagination. Then, a voice pierced the silence, a desperate cry for help. Summoning all my courage, I cautiously approached the door. Peering outside, I saw a haggard figure stumbling through the trees, clutching a torn map. Without thinking, I rushed to assist them, realizing they were as lost and terrified as I had been. Together, we managed to find our way back to the main trail before daylight completely faded. The stranger thanked me profusely, explaining they had been wandering aimlessly for days. As we parted ways at the trailhead, a sense of relief washed over me. Reflecting on the ordeal, I knew I had faced my deepest fears, lost in the wilderness, uncertain if help would arrive. But in that desolate cabin, I found not just temporary refuge, but also a newfound strength to confront the unknown. Yet, as I walked away, a chill settled in my bones. The forest seemed to hold secrets, whispers of something unseen watching from the shadows. The knowledge that we weren't alone out there lingered, 
leaving me with an unsettling feeling long after I left the woods behind. I decided to spend a weekend at a remote cabin in the woods. I needed to get away from the city, the constant noise, and the stress of work. The idea of being surrounded by nature, with no distractions, seemed perfect. The drive up was smooth, and I arrived just before sunset. The cabin was old but solid. It had a cozy charm, with wooden walls, a stone fireplace, and a big window that looked out over the forest. I unpacked my things, lit a fire, and settled in with a book. The quiet was calming, a big change from the hustle and bustle of my everyday life. As night fell, I noticed how dark it got. Without city lights, the darkness was deep and complete. I could hear every rustle of leaves, every creak of the wooden floorboards. It was both creepy and calming. I went to bed early, enjoying the feeling of being cut off from the world. In the middle of the night, a loud thud woke me up. My heart raced as I lay there, listening. Another thud, this time closer. I sat up and strained my ears. It was probably just an animal, I told myself. I had read that deer and raccoons were common in the area. I grabbed a flashlight and decided to check it out. The light from the flashlight cut through the darkness, showing nothing out of the ordinary. I walked around the cabin, looking into the woods. The trees stood like silent guards, their branches swaying gently in the breeze. I didn't see anything unusual, so I went back inside. I locked the door and double-checked the windows. I tried to calm myself down, reminding myself that I was safe inside. I lay back down but found it hard to sleep. Every little sound seemed louder in the silence of the forest. Just as I was starting to drift off, I heard it again, a soft, almost unnoticeable scratching at the window. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. I didn't dare move. The scratching continued, slow and steady. I told myself it was just a tree branch or maybe a raccoon looking for food. Morning couldn't come soon enough. When the first light of dawn came through the trees, I finally felt a sense of relief. I got up and carefully approached the window. There were no scratches, no signs of anything unusual. I spent the day hiking, trying to shake off the unease from the night before. The fresh air and exercise helped clear my mind. By the time I got back to the cabin, I felt more at ease. I made dinner and enjoyed the sunset, reminding myself that I was here to relax. That night, I slept better, the events of the previous night feeling more like a bad dream. The days passed peacefully, and I started to appreciate the quiet and beauty of the forest. The silence became comforting rather than creepy. On my last night, as I sat by the fire, I thought about how much I had needed this break. The scare on the first night seemed silly in hindsight. Nature, while wild and unpredictable, was not out to get me. It was a reminder of how small and silly our fears can be when faced with the vastness of the world. I packed up the next morning, feeling refreshed and recharged. As I drove back to the city, I took one last look at the cabin in the rearview mirror. It had been an adventure, a reminder of the power of nature and the strength within myself to face my fears. I knew I would be back, but next time, I would be ready for whatever the woods had in store. As I turned onto the main road, I glanced back one final time. In the distance, through the thick trees, I saw the faint outline of a figure standing by the cabin. It was too far away to make out any details, but it was clear enough to know I wasn't imagining it. My heart skipped a beat, and a chill ran down my spine. I sped up, eager to put the woods behind me. The image of that figure stayed with me, a haunting reminder that sometimes, the unknown is closer than we think.